We're now ready to give our game a menu screen, and to speed things up I've already brought in some assets. I've brought in three sprites for the buttons that will be on the menu, and they are 128 by 48 pixels, not centered, and I've turned each of those sprites into a different object, object 1P, 2P, and exit, and the buttons will take us to one player mode, two player mode, and quit the game respectively. I've also created another background image, background underscore menu, that has the image that will display on the title screen, and I've created a room to put that in. And I've already gone ahead and placed the background image as well as all three buttons. If you've been following along so far, you should be able to set all of this up by yourself. Click the check mark, and now we actually have to add the events and actions to our button objects. So I'm going to start with object 1P, and all this object needs to do is when we click it, it needs to go to the room 1P. We can do that very easily by going to add event, mouse, and then we want left button. You can see there's also left pressed, left released. Left button is basically a full click. When we hold down and release with the left button, it will then trigger the event. So now to send this to the room that we want, we come over to main one, come down to our rooms actions, and we want this different room. Drag that over, and we need to specify that it will go to room 1P. Click OK. And that's it. Click OK there, and we will do the same for object 2P. Add event, mouse, left button, main one, different room, and this time we will send it to room 2P. Click OK. The final button is the object exit button, which will close our game. We use a similar event, add event, mouse, left button, and this time we're going to come over to main 2, the game category, and we want this power button looking icon, which is the end game action. Drag that over, and this action will close the game window and exit out of it. So click OK, and now before we test it, let's reopen the ball object and change a few actions. And right now we have it set so that in the alarm 1 and 2 events, after a game has been won by one player or the other, we have it reset the room. Instead of that, let's have it go back to the main menu. So let's delete the restart current room action on alarm 1, go back to our main 1 tab, and replace it with this different room action. And we will have it go to room menu. And then we'll do the same on alarm 2, delete the restart room, drag over a different room, and select room menu. And click OK. So now we can test this. It should open up to the room menu. If you made sure that over here in the assets panel it is the first one, remember that the first room in the list is the first one that opens. So let's go ahead and hit the one player button and it should take us to the AI controlled game room and let's let the computer win and that works and it brings us back to the menu so now let's open up two player and we should have access to our two player mode let's win this one and see if it goes back to the menu and it does. And now let's click the exit button and it should close the game. And it does. And so now let's finish off our game by adding some sound effects and background music. We do that just like we do any other asset by coming over to our folder and right click create sound or we can come up to the speaker icon in the toolbar and it will open up this sound properties window. There are two different types of sound assets that we can use. The normal sounds which are basically like sound effects and background music. The first one I'm going to make is a sound effect for the bounce. So I'm going to name this sound underscore bounce. I'm going to load in a sound. And the sound effects that I have are just things from my own personal collection that I've built over the years. But, but if you do a search for free sound effects or free sound clips, then you should be able to find plenty of websites that will have resources for you to use. 
You also have a playback and a stop button here so that you can see what it sounds like as well as a volume control. I'm going to make sure the slider is all the way to the right. Now this is a WAV format file. GameMaker seems to prefer WAV files or MP3s. You can see over here that it will convert the file into an MP3 or AUG format and this will happen when the game compiles but I think we'll just leave all this as is for now. Click OK and we'll create another sound effect this time for when a player scores. So we will call it sound underscore score. Give it another sound effect and keep that all as is. And then I'm going to create one more. And this will be the background music. So sound music. And this music file comes from machinimasound.com which provides free and royalty free music for you to use. I also like to use music from incompetech.com which is also royalty free. So I'll select that. And you can see that because this sound file is an MP3 file, it is automatically considered a background music file. My volume slider has disappeared, so the way I'm going to get that back is by turning this into a normal sound and then reselecting the background music. And I'm going to turn the slider all the way down. In my experience, this volume slider sort of works. This will make it quieter than it normally is, but it doesn't really make it as quiet as you would think it would be. Uh, it also changed my sound name, so I need to rename it Music again. And click OK. And you can see over here in the Asset window that the little icon is a music note, as opposed to this waveform, which indicates that it is, in fact, a background music file. But now that we have these in, we need to activate them. And we're going to have the ball do that. So let's open up the object ball. And in the collision event with object player blue, we're going to drag in a new action. In the main one tab, in the sound category, we have this play sound. Drag that over. And we are going to set the sound to be bounce, because this will play whenever the ball bounces off that paddle. We don't want it to loop. We only want it to play once. So click OK. And now I'm going to right click and copy this action because we're going to paste it into all of our other collisions. So select the collision with player orange, paste it. It doesn't really matter which order this is in, but I like to put it underneath. Let's do the same with the wall, paste that, as well as with the object AI. And then we're going to select the outside room event and this time we're going to play a sound for when the player scores. So let's drag in another play sound and this time let's put it right underneath this start moving in direction. Again, it doesn't really matter. We're going to select the sound score this time. We don't want it to loop. Click OK. And then that just leaves the background music. We want the music to start as soon as the game does. So we can't put it on the object ball because remember this room menu will be the first room that opens and we don't have an object ball in it. We do however have these buttons so let's put it on one of the buttons. I'm going to open object 1P and the event that I'm going to give it is a special one. It's in other game start. We don't want to put this in a create event because that will trigger every time the object is created meaning every time we come back to the menu it will trigger the event and start playing the music, which will give us layered music. We only want the music to start playing once at the beginning of the game. That's why we are using this game start event. So come over to main one and play sound. We want it to play the sound music, the background music file we have. And we do want this to loop, so set it to true. Click OK. And we can test it. Okay, so all of the sound effects trigger correctly, but the music is quite loud. If we open up our music again, we see that we are all the way to the left. This volume slider just isn't that great.
so it would probably be better if you adjusted the volume levels outside of Game Maker in another program. And if you created the music yourself, you would be able to do that before you exported the file. We can see that our other sounds are maxed out, so that's as good as they're going to get. But despite all that, we now have a complete game. It has music, a menu, basic AI, and right now we can actually export this out to an installer so that you can give it to your friends to install on their computers. First we need to make sure that our target up here is set to Windows, and then we can come over to File, Create Application, or we can hit this little button right here, right next to the Save Game icon. It'll bring up a window, and to make this work properly we need to add the extension .exe to the end of the name. Why Game Maker doesn't automatically put it there, I don't know, but if you don't put it there, it will not work. So then once you hit save, it will compile and then save out an installer, and you should be able to use that to install your game on any Windows computer. There are some settings that will allow you to customize the installer so that you can put in things like a EULA or a license agreement or custom banners and icons for the installer, but I think I'll cover all of that stuff in a separate video later. And with that, our first game is done. But I think we can do better than a Pong clone. So we'll take our game to the next evolution and turn it into Brick Breaker.